Hello and welcome back to Introduction to CFD and today we'll have another tutorial on GMesh for computational grid generation for of course CFD simulations. Remember this is part of the pre-process of CFD. Today we'll be looking at the GMesh computational grid generation software to try and create a simple structured two-dimensional grid. Let's begin. First of course you'll have to install GMesh and be able to open it up and you should you should see a window like this. The first thing to always do is to try and create a new GMesh uh, file. So we'll go to File, New, and type in corner.geo, just to make a new geo file. And let's save. So we're always working in a new file, because when you automatically start the program, it makes an automatically like new file untitled .geo. That's not very useful. We want to save it into a subdirectory called corner under my grids directory called corner.geo. Hit save, and we'll use the Open Cascade environment. That's the Open CAD engine versus the built-in one. And remember, they both have advantages and disadvantages. We'll just do Open Cascade, and we're ready to go. So the first thing to do, remember, is we have to create our geometry. So that's our first step before we can create a mesh, and of course, before we set boundary missions. So we'll open up the geometry tab under the left-hand plane by left-clicking the little arrow. And then we'll open up the little arrow that says Elementary Entities. We'll just create a simple little corner flow to demonstrate how to create a structured grid. But remember, GMesh is an unstructured code. So the grid will have some structural ordering to it, but it will always be an unstructured domain. GMesh can't truly make realistic, implicit ordering uh, structured grids, but it'll look just like a structured grid. There are certain advantages for that for CFD. So let's, let's create some geometry in here. So let's add, under geometry, elementary entities, add. And let's add some number of points. So I'll left click points. And the grid comes up. And I could move my mouse around and just click E to insert the points. Or I can alternatively just type them in here on the left. So I'm going to choose to type them in manually and click add. And leave them all in the Z equals to zero plane. Now, if you're making two-dimensional grids and computational fluid dynamics, it's going to be really important to make sure you know what plane the Z should be in. For example, some solvers will try and use the spanwise direction from, say, Z equal to zero, Z equals to zero, to say Z equal to some value to prescribe some, you know, volume in the element. Um, the CFD solver we're using right now in this class, we will prescribe Z equals zero. Alternatively, you could really set to Z whatever we want, but we'll just leave 0 to 1. So we're going to construct our whole grid in the plane so it's a 2D flow or axisymmetric. Remember, some CFT solvers are also axisymmetric solvers, and we want to construct, say, a plane which we might um, let a different set of equations in the solver use to, to approximate an axisymmetric flow. Anyway, we'll just go in and add some points here. So I'm going to do X, Y, and Z is 0. And this last option, will it's like a grid density for the mesh, prescribed mesh size. So I'll just leave that as 1, and I'll play with my values later. But I could easily change this to say like 0.1 or 2 or 5 or 0.01, whatever I want. And then if I make an unstructured grid, it'll weight the grid point spacing uh, inversely proportional to this value at each particular point. So I'm just going to leave it 1 everywhere. So let's go ahead and click Add. Now I've added a point in my origin. Now let's make a point at 1, 0, 0. Add. Now I have another one. Now let's make my next point at 2, mm, let's say, 0.5. 0. Add that. Okay. And now I want, say, x. Let's make this uh, 2, just for fun. And we'll click Add. And I want another point at, say, mm, Let's do one, two, click add, and then I'll do one more point at x equals zero and two, and let's make that one and click add. Okay, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six total points. So let's go ahead and hit Q and close that window. So now's a good time to go ahead and save. Flow. That is flow moves from the left to right, and there's maybe a wall on the bottom and a free field condition at the top. 
But before we can set those boundary conditions, we might need to make the outer part of the domain. And we'll do that with simple lines. So let's left click line. And now it just says, oh, select start point. So this is easy and cue to quit. So I will usually go in the direction of the flow and the direction of the cross flow. So for our first line, I'll simply click once and click again. And now I have a line from my origin to x equals one. Now I'll make my second line. Click. And now I'll make my lines along the top side of my domain from here to here and click, click. So I've made four lines. Now I need to make my boundaries in the cross stream direction or the spanwise direction. So let's do the inlet first, one to two and one to two. And now I'm done creating lines, so I'll just push Q right there. And I'm done. Let's save it now. After I save it, I make a copy of the .geo file in my directory as a backup. I'll just call it corner underscore back one. I'll do that now. Now that I've made my points and created a closed domain with lines, I need to define that this is a plane or a surface. There's lots of ways to do that, but when I'm in working in 2D, the easiest way is to go over to the left under Geometry, Elemental Entities, and Add, and we'll go down and look for Plane Surface right there. So I'll left click that, and it says Select Surface Boundary. So now I just click one of the lines, and it automatically tries to find a closed surface. If I had a more complicated geometry, I would actually have to click particular lines to close that and make a surface, but it did it automatically. So it automatically detected that I have a simply closed surface. Now make this a surface, I need to push E. So I'll go ahead and push E now, and I'm done. Now I want to get out of the surface uh, creation dialog, so I'll push Q, I push Q. Okay, that's done. Now I have a surface. And if I go in there, I can move my mouse and I can say I know I have one particular plane, which is a surface. Let's go ahead and save that now. Before I do anything else, I want to set the boundary conditions. So I'll come down here and I'll open up the physical groups under elementary entities under geometry. So let's go and do that. And first I want to define this plane as a fluid domain. So I'll select surface and I'll just type in fluid so I know it's fluid and I will click that. I select it now, push E. And now I've created a fluid domain as the plane. So quit to get out of that. And now I want to set the boundary conditions. So I will say they're curves or lines, right? Because it's in 2D. If I was in 3D, my boundary conditions would be set by selecting surface, but I'm 2D. So let's do curves, left click curve. And I'll just say one is an inlet. And that's this line. I push E. That's done. Now I'll rename it to outlet. And I'll select the, select the outlet line, which is now in red. And I'll push E, selected. And I'll say wall, and I have two. I'll select this as the wall, push E to end selection, and let's do a, I don't know, free stream boundary condition up top. So this could be like a corner flow where maybe an oblique shockwave forms here or just flow turns around with subsonic speed. I'll select the free stream boundaries and push E to end. After left clicking both lines, they're in red. It's done. Now I push Q to exit and I'll save that. Now I've set the basic geometry, I've set a plane as the fluid domain, and of course I now have, if I move my mouse around, you can see I've set the boundary conditions. And so all I have to do is create the grid, and then I can keep going with CFD and export it. Is to create the computational domain. Let's just naively create an unstructured domain. So I close my geometry module because I'm completely done with geometry. And I go into Mesh, and I can go down and simply click 1D. Now I have, of course, discretized the actual boundary. And I click 2D. I don't have to go to 3D because it's only two domains. Let's click 2D. And now I see my mesh. It's in green, but it's really coarse. There's a few ways to fix this. The first, of course, is to, to simply increase the global mesh size factor. Excuse me, change it. Let's go in there, and let's just make it, for example, 0 0.25. Hit OK. Click 1D again, 2D, and you can see now my domain is much finer. 
At this point, I have done everything I need to run my CFD simulation, though I won't get a very good solution because my grid is so coarse. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and do File, and then Export, and choose my particular solver. I could, oh, let me bring this up so you can see it easier. There's a whole list of solvers and formats in here, and it's so long it won't even fit on my particular screen that I'm recording on. So that's up to you, but we're not going to do that right now. We'll just go ahead and cancel that. But just know I'm ready to run, but I want to improve the grid. So some things I can do. Perhaps I want to control how the grid points are distributed along each of these boundaries. Let's do that for the unstructured case first. So I'll go ahead and save it. And I don't have to really change anything, but let's just, um, you know, um, kind of just hit 1D again so we re-discretize the domain. And we'll just leave it like that for now. The next step is to, under Mesh, is to go under Define and go under Transfinite. Transfinite will allow us to distribute the grid points on these particular lines. So let's go under Transfinite. And we can do this on curved surfaces or volumes, but we're most often operate on curves. And so this will allow us to distribute and specify the number of points or nodes along each of these lines. Let's do that. So let's just click Curve and see what dialog comes up. Left click Curve, and we have Transfinite Curve. There's three major options. The first is the number of points on the curve. The second option is progression or bump. And the third option is the parameter. Now, if we select progression, it'll indicate that the grid point spacing is increasing or de decreasing from one point on the curve to the next. And then the parameter for progression will indicate at what rate the grid point spacing is changing. Let's try a few examples just so you can understand how this is working. And we'll do this maybe, let's say, for the vertical line here. And we'll leave all the other ones undefined. So let's say we have, ooh, I don't know, 25 points along our curve. And I'll hit Tab, and we'll leave it as Progression, and we'll leave it as 1. Now we can select the curve. Let's do that now. I left-clicked it, and I'll push E. Now I've applied that, and if we put our mouse over it, you'll see that now it's an inlet, it's a physical curve number 2, and now it has mesh attributes. It's a transfinite curve with 25 grid points and a progression setting of 1. You can see it in the parameters here. So let's just move our little window over here for now to get it out of the way. Yeah, up here is good. And I have to exit the dialog. Okay, I'll save that. Now let's regenerate our mesh. 1D, 2D. And now you can see along this boundary, I actually have, if you count them, 25 grid points from the bottom to the top. The other ones are unchanged and are floating. We have not specified the number of grid points. In fact, we could go around the whole curve and set whatever number of grid points we want. Let's just do another one for now to keep it um, even. If I have 25 on the left, I might want to have 25 on the right. So I'll go ahead and click that, push E, and it's applied. Q and 1D, 2D. Now we have 25 grid points on the right and left boundaries. Now perhaps I don't like the way they're distributed on the right and left boundaries. Let's go in and redistribute them. So, transfinite curve, bring up the dialog again. We'll leave it at 25 points, and now let's change the parameter, say, 1.1. And now I'll apply it to the left and right curves, and we'll see how this changes the solution. Here, here. Now you'll see the progress of the parameter goes from the direction which I created the line. I created both these lines from the bottom to the top consistently. If I reversed one line, I would actually have to change the other parameter for one particular line on the right if I created it from top to bottom to be consistent. I'll show you what that means in a bit. So let's see what the new grid looks like. 1D, 2D. Now you can see the grid point spacing near the bottom is much smaller than near the top. Look at the grid point spacing around here. It's a very long distance. And now if I zoom in, the grid point spacing near the wall is very small. So you can see by using this technique, I can control the grid point spacing along these particular lines. That's very useful for creating boundary layers. Unfortunately, you see my grid point spacing from this wall to this wall becomes very large in the middle of the grid. And so by using these unstructured meshes in this fashion, even though I'm controlling grid point spacing on the left and right walls, I still have unresolved my boundary layer near this part of the wall. Let's play it a little bit more with this parameter. Say I set it to 0 0.90, and we'll just do the left wall. Click E, regenerate the mesh. You'll see now that I've reversed the grid point spacing. 
So values of the progression parameter below one will make grid point spacing very small near, for example, the end of the line. Let's go back and try one more setting. Curve, transfinite, but now we'll do bump. And let's make it say 1.25 and apply it to the left line. 1D, 2D. And now you'll see I have a very large grid point spacing near the walls and finer in the middle. You can imagine I could create a channel flow easily with this type of technique. So let's do the opposite parameter. Transfinite curve, and now I'll do it say 0.50. I'll select the left boundary and see what happens. E, quit, select, 1D, 2D. And now you see my grid point spacing is actually reversed. I actually have a smaller spacing near the walls and a larger spacing near the middle. You can play with these parameters to distribute grid points along lines however you wish. And this is very useful for resolving boundary layers in computational fluid dynamics. Now let's try and add transfinite curves um, to the other values. Let's go back to progression and let's do say 1.20 and we'll make it here and here. And let's just say we want even distribution of grid points of say 50 along the top curves and bottom curves. I'm left clicking each of these and pushing E to select and now I'm getting out of the dialog. Let's regenerate our mesh and see what happens. 1D, 2D. Oh, well that's a much better mesh and you can see how fine my mesh is along this particular wall. It's obviously too coarse along the upper wall, but we'll just leave it here for now. Notice that I have 50 grid points, 50 grid points, and 50 and 50 on the top and bottom. Altogether, you might imagine I have 99 grid points along the top wall and 99 grid points along the bottom wall. Why isn't it 100? Because of course they share a particular grid point between the two lines. And I have 25 on the left and 25 on the right. Now I have an unstructured mesh. I could even make it, you know, finer just by clicking refine by splitting. Let's try that once and again. What a beautiful mesh. I could now go in and smooth the mesh in TDE just by clicking this button. Now it's going through and running an elliptic PDE solver to smooth out the mesh. And you can actually see the mesh changing a slightly bit every time. I can now go to Tools and Statistics and see my mesh statistics. In the geometry, I still have 6.6 .6 curves, one surface, and five physical groups. In the mesh, you can see now I have 30,000 nodes with only six points, 976 lines, which would make up the boundary, and a total number of triangular elements, which are, of course, on the surface of 58,528. You can also see the number of statistics here. You'll see I have no three-dimensional elements, and that makes sense, of course, because I'm in 2D. Let's close this dialog, and let's reset the mesh, 1D, 2D, and I'm back to the original mesh. I could once again smooth this and do all other kinds of things. Note also, I can change the 2D meshing strategy. Let's open up options, double-click, and go to, let's see, all mesh options. And we'll go to general. And in the 2D algorithm, we can change it to other ones. Let's just for fun, go to Delaunay. Close that and go 1D, 2D. My mesh is obviously a little bit different because of course I used a different algorithm to generate it. And in my CFD class under grid generation, we talked about these two fundamental grid generation algorithms. We'll look at these more later. For now, let's try and convert this mesh into a structured mesh. It's still an unstructured mesh in terms of G-mesh, but the ordering will be logical, and it's much better for a typical CFD simulation. Structured domain. Before I do that, I have to make sure I have a left boundary, right boundary with the same number of grid points. You can see there are 25, 25, and the same number of grid points on the top and bottom. 50 and 50, that's 99. 50 and 50, that is 99 on the top and bottom. So go under mesh, then do define, transfinite for structure, and we want to make a surface. We'll left click surface, and now you'll see this window comes up. This little pull down menu means the arrangement of the resultant triangles that will form in 2D. They'll be left-leaning, right-leaning, or alternated. Now, some CFT solvers will prefer some certain arrangement. In unstructured solvers, it won't make too much of a difference. So let's just leave it at the default of left. And you can go back and recreate meshes and 
recreate these transfinite surfaces and experiment yourself. So let's leave it as left and we'll go in and select the surface. Left click, done. Now it says select the ordered boundary points. We need to have four points for a two-dimensional domain because it'll make a structured domain and they'll need four points to make like a, a box or a rectangle and in, in three dimensions how many points would we need? We would need eight because a volume, a structured volume, would have of course six faces and a cube for instance has eight points and six faces. So let's do this in 2D. We need to be careful. So I'll select the lower left hand point first left click, and then I'll go around in counterclockwise fashion. I'll skip this point. I don't click it because that's not a corner of the structured domain. The corner where the indices end would be this point here. Now I choose the third corner, and I skip this point because it's not in the corner of the structured grid, and I'll go over here to the last point. Click, and now I'm done. Now I push E. And now it goes back to creating another transfinite surface that I want to, I only have one, so I push Q, and now I'm done. So let's go ahead and save that, just to be careful. And let's see if it worked. We'll go down here and left click 1D. Now I have nodes which are generated on the edge of my domain, and now I'll create the 2D surface mesh for my 2D CFD simulation. Left click. Oh, that looks wonderful. So let's go ahead and look in our mesh. Zoom in. And I'm going to right zooming of my wheel mouse and I'm going to right click and drag and I can go along and I can see how my grid point spacing along the wall is made nice and close to the wall to resolve my boundary layer. Now I only have to create the transfinite mesh once which is wonderful. Let's just keep scrolling out a little bit and you can see all this is great. And my grid point spacing far away from the wall is very large because, of course, I want to have to resolve this part of the boundary layer. My flow moves from left to right from the inlet to the outlet, and this is like a solid wall. So I've done everything. I can actually export this and run it and have a resolved boundary layer. Now let's say I want to maybe increase or decrease the resolution of the boundary layer. You'll see, if I move my mouse over here, that it says I have a transfinite curve of 20.5 points and a progression of 1.2. Let's make it more aggressive. So we can go down here and do transfinite curve, left click curve, and change it to 25 because we need 25 points here and 25 points here. They always have to be even. I can't change this curve to be say 50 points and the right one to be say 40 because the, the, you can't create a structured domain with 50 grid points on the left and say 40 on the right. Why is that? That's a good thing to think about, especially if you're a student. But we'll just leave it at 25, and now we'll make our progression parameter 1.5, which is pretty aggressive, and we'll select this curve, and we'll, we'll leave that curve. So we still have the same number of points on both curves, 25 and 25, but the progression on the right is going to be 1.2, and the progression on the left I'm going to change by pressing E to 1.5. I'll close this menu and I'll do 1D, 2D, and now you can see if I zoom in, I have a very, very fine mesh near the wall and highly skewed cells, which isn't, it's okay for an attached boundary layer. If I would want more grid resolution in the streamwise direction if it wasn't. And you can see as I zoom in here, the grid point spacing has remained. Generally, it's probably a good idea to make the grid point spacing roughly the same between the inlet and outlet for this type of case. And you can also see far away, I have much bigger grid point spacing in the far away part of the domain. I can probably get away with that in a CFD code if there's not any large flow disturbances or problems out here. I can do all the same operations. I can even go in and say smooth 2D a few times and you can see the mesh changing, or I can reset a mesh 1D, 2D, and I can go back and I can do refine by splitting. And refine by splitting, unfortunately, is it is gonna still maintain a structured grid, but it's not gonna be as good as the initial mesh with Gmesh. But anyway, you can try it out if you wish. If I wanted to increase my number of grid points, I would do 1D, 2D again, and then I would probably go in and just add more points on the lines. For example, let's do this with these particular grid points here and here and here and here. So I'm gonna do this quick, surface. Oh, sorry, I don't want to surface, I wanna do curves. 
and I'll do 25, 1.2, and I'll make the inlet and outlet the same again. And let's just see how that affects 1D, 2D, the grid, nice and structured. Now let's say I wanna do, say, 40, and I wanna make it one, and I'll change the number of good points along here. So now I have a coarser grid in the streamwise direction. Let's do that and see how it works. So you see, I didn't have to redefine the surface, still have a nice structured grid. Okay, now let's make these two lines a progression of say 1.25. Let's make them now. And make these lines say 0.75. And see what happens. Now I've distributed my grid at the inlet and exit, but I have under-resolved the corner. That's not a good idea. So let's make the progression a little bit different. Let's make it opposite. So I have 0 0.75 at the, in the streamwise direction and say 1.25 on these lines. Let's see what happens, 1D, 2D. And now you can see I have a structured grid and I've put a lot of grid point spacing near the corner. Now I don't need that kind of grid point spacing up on top, so let's change this back to one and make it 40 points on one the top, just like that, and I'm center my plane, do 1D, 2D. And now you can see I have a really interesting grid where I've put a lot of grid points near the corner, it's structured, and I can do all kinds of things like this. I can still go in and smooth it a few times just to make it a little bit more stable, numerically stable for myself. And if I zoom in, you can see I have a nice grid point density near my corner. Anyway, this is the basics of structured grids with GMesh. It is not a structured grid solver, but you have a lot of power to create these types of grids for unstructured solvers. So I'll quit that, and that remains the end of our talk today on creating basic 2D grids with, which are unstructured and structured from scratch. And you can solve all kinds of basic fundamental problems using this approach. Thanks for your time.